One of the saddest stories in movie history involves the early career of Orson Welles, who at the age of 24 in 1941 had a triumph the first time up to bat with Citizen Kane, which is often considered the greatest film of all time. The next year, in 1942, he made The Magnificent Ambersons, but then he was sent to South America to make a four-part docudrama, and the history of this film is the history of why Orson Welles became considered unreliable by the Hollywood establishment. This is Orson Welles bringing you a special broadcast from Rio de Janeiro. I'm talking to you English speakers from the other side of the equator, from the United States of Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, 1942 is going to look fine in the history books. To go to South America, Wells had to leave behind the editing in Magnificent Ambersons, and the studio, in his absence, shot a new ending and butchered the picture. Meanwhile, Wells found himself seduced by the story of four poor fishermen in Brazil who sailed more than 1,600 miles in a tiny raft in the open sea in order to try to get help for their starving villages. Wells was so enamored by this dramatic story that he wanted to center the entire movie around it, but the studio, even though they thought of this project as a patriotic duty to improve U.S.-South American relationships, didn't like the story and pulled the plug on his financing. So I was fired from Archeo, and they made a great publicity of point of the fact that I had gone to South America without a script and thrown all this money away. That, I never recovered from that, uh, from that attack. The sad thing is that because It's All True was never completed, Wells got the reputation in Hollywood as a man who couldn't stay within budget and couldn't finish a film on time. That wasn't really true, but the reputation dogged him all of his days, and so this man who started out so brilliantly with Citizen Kane then spent the rest of his career scrambling to try to put projects together. It's All True is a fascinating film, both in and of itself, and in terms of the documentary surrounding it, telling about this ill-fated project. I give it three stars, and I'm Roger Ebert.